she never judged the wizard. She was upset with him, yes, but she didn't judge him because without him doing what he did, which which would be outwardly looked at as lie and be deceitful, his purpose was to make Dorothy see her higher purpose. So that's what I that's what I was saying yesterday. What may be looking foolish and crazy, that shit may be that shit may be the key to open up your spiritual door. Mm. Right. Cause don't forget, now if you want to go back to the re- Papa Legba and and you know, and that's what they be mean. They be these dudes, the, the jokester. The jokester is a part of spiritual uh, mythology. It's a part of the spiritual realm that it has to be. This thing is first of all, it's fun. It's supposed to be joyful, and then secondly, it's supposed to have an a way of not just giving you it is to play little games with you. You notice that people are always talking about how, look what they're doing to us. They're putting this music out to dumb us down. They're doing this to us, to us. And like, it came to a certain point in my life where I realized I don't fall in that category. They're not doing that to me. They're not doing that to you. Mm. I noticed that you're claiming it as well. But that's not happening to me. That relates to what Maestro was saying, but it's almost like a filter, right? There's a, a line, there's a liminal line. And if you fall subliminal, right? If you're affected, if you're under that line, then that's you, that's where you find yourself. So for us, who aren't affected by that kind of thing, we're above that line. So that stuff doesn't apply to us. They're trying to do this to us, y'all. They're trying to, yeah, they are, but that has nothing to do with me. So we talk about this music change. Mm. I was talking to somebody about this last night. You know, it's a lot like everything can relate to harvesting fruits and vegetables and plants and stuff like that. When you grow a crop of like say apples and oranges and potatoes and stuff like that, what type of energy is beaming down from the sun at that time, the nutrients in the ground and all that, that's gonna make that crop of fruits and vegetables unique. And when you eat it, you get that particular uh, frequency that the sun was putting out in that season. Mm-hmm. Years later, it's not the same apple, not the same potato, it's a different set of ingredients. But it yeah. will make the people in that time, just like the music. When we were coming up, there was a certain need on the planet for us and for being filtered through the music that we consumed. The music that's being produced now, it's serving a different purpose for a different kind of people. So it doesn't taste good to us, but it's extreme, it's just as necessary as our music was. Because it's a speeding up of what can be, you know, called in, in evolution and evolving. That there are particular magi's whose job it is to manipulate the full, to, mem- to manipulate the populace. So it is to, like you said, if you, that's like I said earlier, the information is no different than when they show the, the raw symbolism with, with arms and unks coming down. That is divine spiritual inspiration information. So the whole thing you just mentioned that when you eat kale or you eat tomatoes and it's freshly grown, you getting pure solar energy is coming through through that food. So when you ingest it, it is going to be healthier than if you were to say, well, I'm going to eat two hamburgers and some french fries. Not saying that you won't get information from that, but it's the processing it's the it's the other filter that they've added upon it. You can pick the tomatoes and the kale and take it straight from the ground and it'd be pure. But once you got to do something to it, or you didn't add it some fertilizer and shit like that, you change it, you change the original structure. So with the music, like you said, me, I'm 48 now. So I didn't been through and even in my short lifetime, I didn't been through multiple ev- evolutionary patterns. Like you said, at one time, there wasn't no what they call a cassette. It was, it was a, a, a fucking a, a cassette tape, DVD, um, a VCR tape. Then everything went to, as you just said, in the cloud. You can just download music to your phone, not even ever have to touch a CD of a VCR tape. That's an evolutionary pattern. So when they changed it from where I like to listen to jazz music, it's scientifically known, and I've always listened to jazz. 
Science knows that when you listen to particular music, it does something to your brain. It it increases the firing of the of the mental electricity to form new neural pathways. So what, as you mentioned, with the music, and as I always say, they are magicians who are in control of that stuff. They they tweak the frequency to slow down neural new neural passageways being formed by devaluing that we mentioned earlier about value and stuff they devalue the music frequency there ain't no natural horns being blown there is no real drums being played in a lot of the music it's 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 far and in between so they take that away and they bring it back in because it has to be a balance you can't just totally wipe it all out you just suppress it you know? So if we're going to talk about that, then it would serve uh, useful to talk about how that process works. The difference between mm. analog music and digital music is that it undergoes sampling. The whole thing about digital music is that it's sampled. So when we record me actually playing a trumpet, it is, it's still sampled because everything is digital now. Mm-hmm. But the samples are taken from a unique organic frequency. Now, what's actually happening today is somebody is using a keyboard for that trumpet, right? So Mm -hmm. it's one note that I played. And what they did was they sliced up that one sound bite into a million or probably a couple dozen Mm -hmm. bits. And Mm -hmm. we do that for the C. We transpose that same one to D, same one to E. So no matter what note you're playing, it's that same uh, trumpet blast, but they're just transposing it. So we're not getting organic original flows. It's usually one note that's just transposed or uh, altered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You explained that perfectly for those who, who make and create music. That's you exactly right. And I was thinking that when I used to be messing with music, and I'm talking, I'm going I'm to I'm say the hey, eight. Back in the 1990s, from 1990 to 93, when you think about how music was, just think about Tribe Called Quest. When you heard their music, they used samples, but think about the sound of what they were sampling. They were sampling jazz sounds and different. It was a tone for people who know keyboards and organs. We knew that a lot of them, uh, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Brand Nubian and, and the P-Rock and Seal, they all used a Wurlitzer uh, organ because it had a particular sound with it that in the front of this keyboard, it had a fan. So when you would press the keys, it was like the old church organ. When you press the keys, it, it, spun, that, it spun that fan in the front and it made a different pattern with those with the notes that came out. So eventually, as we are now, we're hearing all of these, like you said, people are taking, if you got something that's going, they taking that and splitting that thing 35 times. And you know what, that, and that just speeds you up to a whole much. So that causes a physical reaction in your, in your body. So you take a, a energetic 15 year old, then peace my show, a 15 year old, 16 year old, and you keep hitting them with that type of frequency over and over. And then you see, you get what we got going on today. It's actually masterful the way that it's, the way that it's used. 